Esperanto is a constructed international auxiliary language. The creator of Esperanto, L. L. Zamenhof, illustrated Esperanto pronunciation by comparing its letters with their equivalents in several major European languages and declaring a principle of one letter, one sound. With over a century of use, Esperanto has developed a phonological norm, including accepted details of phonetics, phonotactics, and intonation, so that it is now possible to speak of proper Esperanto pronunciation and properly formed words independently of the languages originally used to describe Esperanto. This norm diverges only minimally from the original ideal of one letter, one sound. That is, it accepts only minor allophonic variation. Before Esperanto phonotactics became fixed, foreign words were adopted with spellings that violated the apparent intentions of Zamenhof and the norms that would develop later, such as pupo, poop deck, uato, wat, and matko, sports match. Many of these coinages have proven to be unstable, and have either fallen out of use or been replaced with pronunciations more in keeping with the developing norms, such as pobo for pupo, vato for uato, and matko for matko. On the other hand, the word jida Yiddish, which was also sometimes criticized on phonotactical grounds but had been used by Zamenhof, is well established. <inaudible> Inventory The original Esperanto lexicon contains 23 consonants, including 4 affricates and 1, x, which has become rare, and 11 vowels, 5 simple and 6 diphthongs. A few additional sounds in loan words, such as o, are not stable. Topic: <inaudible> Consonants. <inaudible> the uncommon affricate d z does not have a distinct letter in the orthography, but is written with the digraph d z, as in Edzo, husband. Not everyone agrees on its status as a phoneme. Wenergren considers it as a simple sequence of d plus z. The phoneme, x, has been largely replaced with, k, and is a marginal phoneme mostly found in loanwords and proper names such as siho a check, versus siko a check. The voiced labia velar approximant, with is normally only encountered as the second element of diphthongs see below, although it is sometimes used consonantally in onomatopoeia and in foreign names. Vowels. There are also six historically stable diphthongs, i, oi, ui, a, and o, e, u. However, some authors such as John C. Wells regard them as vowel plus consonant combinations, a, j, o, j, u, j, e, j, a, e, u, while Wenergren regards only the latter two as diphthongs. <laughs> Slavic origins This inventory is rather similar to that of Polish, but is especially close to Belarusian, which was historically important to Zamenhof, the creator of Esperanto. The essential difference from Belarusian and Polish is the absence of palatalization, although this was present in Proto-Esperanto now Nasyaj nations, Familj, now Familio family, and arguably survives marginally in the affectionate suffixes njo and sijo, and in the interjection tju. Minor differences are that G is pronounced as a stop, rather than as a fricative. In Belarusian, the stop pronunciation is found in recent loan words, a distinction between X and H, and the absence of a diphthong O, O, though that was added to Esperanto to a minor degree after its creation. Like Belarusian, V is found in syllable onsets and U in syllable codas, however, unlike Belarusian, V does not become U if forced into coda position through compounding, though Zamenhof avoided such situations by adding an epithetic vowel, lavobasno, washbasin, not asterisk lavbasno or asterisk laubaseno. Orthography and pronunciation The Esperanto alphabet is nearly phonemic. The letters, along with the IPA and nearest English equivalent of their principal allophone, are <laughs> Minimal pairs Esperanto has many minimal pairs between the voiced and voiceless plosives, BDG, and PTK, for example, PAGI pay, versus PACI pack, borrow, bar, versus PARO 
pair tico briefcase versus deco group of 10 on the other hand the distinctions between several esperanto consonants carry very light functional loads though they are not in complementary distribution and therefore not allophones the practical effect of this is that people who do not control these distinctions are still able to communicate without difficulty. These minor distinctions are J versus G D, contrasted in aho concrete thing versus ago age K K versus H X versus H H, contrasted in koro heart versus horo chorus versus horo hour, and in the prefix ek incoative versus aho echo D Z D Z versus Z Z, not contrasted in basic vocabulary, and C T S versus C T. Found in a few minimal pairs such as caro czar, car, because, c thou, c proximate particle used with deictics, silo goal, silo cell, eco ness, ek even, etc. Belarusian seems to have also provided the model for Esperanto's diphthongs, as well as the complementary distribution of v restricted to the onset of a syllable, and u occurring only as a vocalic offglide, although this was modified slightly, with Belarusian o corresponding to Esperanto o v as in bovlo, and u being restricted to the sequences o, u in Esperanto. Although v and u may both occur between vowels, as in nawa ninth and nava of knaves, the diphthongal distinction holds, now, a versus na dot v a. However, Zamenhof did allow initial u in onomatopoeic words such as ua wa. The semivowel j likewise does not occur after the vowel i, but is also restricted from occurring before i in the same morpheme, whereas the Belarusian letter i represents g. Later exceptions to these patterns, such as pupo poop deck, uato wat, East Asian proper names beginning with, and jida Yiddish, are marginal. The distinction between e and ej carries a light functional load, in the core vocabulary perhaps only distinctive before alveolar sonorants, such as kello peg, kello cellar, mello mile, mello badger, regno rhine, reno kidney. The recent borrowing geho homosexual could contrast with the ombisexual prefix ge if used in compounds with a following consonant, and also creating possible confusion between geja paro homosexual couple and heya paro heterosexual couple, which are both pronounceable as eja paro. U is also uncommon, and very seldom contrastive, euro a euro versus arrow a bit. Stress and prosody Within a word, stress is on the penultimate syllable, with each vowel defining a syllabic nucleus, familio family, o, family. An exception is when the final o of a noun is elided, usually for poetic reasons, because this does not affect the placement of the stress, family, family. On the rare occasions that stress needed to be specified, as in explanatory material or with proper names, Zamenhof used an acute accent. The most common such proper name is Zamenhof's own, Zamenhof. If the stress falls on the last syllable, it is common for an apostrophe to be used, as in poetic elision, Ogolin. There is no set rule for which other syllables might receive stress in a polysyllabic word, or which monosyllabic words are stressed in a clause. Morphology, semantic load, and rhythm all play a role. By default, Esperanto is trochaic, stress tends to hit alternate syllables, Esperanto. However, derivation tends to leave such secondary stress unchanged, at least for many speakers, Esperantisto or Esperantisto or for some just Esperantisto. Similarly, compound words generally retain their original stress. They never stress an epithetic vowel, thus vorto proviso, not asterisk vorto proviso. Within a clause, rhythm also plays a role. However, referential words, lexical words and pronouns attract stress, whereas connecting words such as prepositions tend not to. Danu al mi or Danu al mi give to me, not asterisk Danu al mi. In ku v vidas la hunden kio kuris preter la domo? Do you see the dog that's running past the house? The function words do not take stress, not even two syllable kio which or preter beyond. The verb esti to be behaves similarly, as can be seen by the occasional elision of the e in poetry or rapid speech. Me ne stas citai, I'm not here. Phonological words do not necessarily match orthographic words. Pronouns, prepositions, the article, and other monosyllabic function words are generally pronounced as a unit with the following word: mahavas, I have, lachnabo, the boy, delvorto, of the word, citablo, at table. 
Exceptions include chi and, which may be pronounced more distinctly when it has a larger scope than the following word or phrase. Within poetry, of course, the meter determines stress. Ho, mia ko ar, ne batu maltrankvial, oh my heart, do not beat uneasily. Emphasis and contrast may override normal stress. Pronouns frequently take stress because of this. In a simple question like ku vi vitis? Did you see? The pronoun hardly needs to be said and is unstressed. Compare ne, danu al mi and no, give me. Within a word, a prefix that wasn't heard correctly may be stressed upon repetition. Ne, ne tien. I r u maildextrin, me dearest. No, not over there. Go left, I said. Because stress doesn't distinguish words in Esperanto, shifting it to an unexpected syllable calls attention to that syllable, but doesn't cause confusion as it might in English. As in many languages, initialisms behave unusually. When grammatical, they may be unstressed, k, t, p, kotopo, etc. When used as proper names, they tend to be idiosyncratic, u, e, a, u, e, a, u, e, a, or u, e, a, but rarely asterisk, u, e, a. This seems to be a way of indicating that the term is not a normal word. However, full acronyms tend to have regular stress, teho, te jo. Lexical tone is not phonemic. Nor is clausal intonation, as question particles and changes in word order serve many of the functions that intonation performs in English. Topic: <laughs> Phonotactics. A syllable in Esperanto is generally of the form s s c c v c c. That is, it may have an onset, of up to three consonants, must have a nucleus of a single vowel or diphthong except in onomatopoeic words such as z's, and may have a coda of zero to one occasionally two consonants. Any consonant may occur initially, with the exception of j before i though there is now one word that violates this restriction, jida Yiddish, which contrasts with ida of an offspring. Any consonant except H may close a syllable, though coda G and J are rare in monomorphemes they contrast in ag age versus aj thing. Within a morpheme, there may be a maximum of four sequential consonants, as for example in instruous teaches, dextrin to the right. Long clusters generally include a sibilant such as S or one of the liquids L or R. Geminate consonants generally only occur in polymorphemic words, such as mal longa short, ek kusi to flop down, mis scribi to mis right, in ethnonyms such as finno a fin, gallo a gall now more commonly gallo, in proper names such as solero schiller, budo buddha now more commonly budo, and in a handful of unstable borrowings such as matko a sports match. In compounds of lexical words, Zamenhof separated identical consonants with an epithetic vowel, as in vivovespero the evening of life, never asterisk vivespero. Word final consonants occur, though final voiced obstruents are generally rejected. For example, Latin ad to became Esperanto al, and Polish odd then morphed into Esperanto ol then. Sonorants and voiceless obstruents, on the other hand, are found in many of the numerals, cent 100, ok 8, sep 7, ses 6, kvin 5, kvar 4, also dumb during, ek even. Even the poetic elision of final o is rarely seen if it would leave a final voiced obstruent. A very few words with final voiced obstruents do occur, such as sed but and a pud next to, but in such cases there is no minimal pair contrast with a voiceless counterpart that is, there is no asterisk set or asterisk a put to cause confusion with sed or a pud. This is because many people, including the Slavs and Germans, do not contrast voicing in final obstruents. For similar reasons, sequences of obstruents with mixed voicing are not found in Zamenhofian compounds, apart from numerals and grammatical forms, thus long attempt, for a long time, not asterisk longtemp, note that, v, is an exception to this rule, like in the Slavic languages. It is effectively ambiguous between fricative and approximant. The other exception is, kz, which is commonly treated as, z. Syllabic consonants occur only as interjections and onomatopoeia, fr, sss, ss, hm. All triconsonantal onsets begin with a sibilant, s or s. Disregarding proper names, such as Vladimiro, the following initial consonant clusters occur. Stop plus liquid, bl, br, place, pr, doctor, tr, gl, gr, kl, kr, Voiceless fricative plus liquid, Florida, fr, sl, sl, senior 
Voiceless sibilant plus voiceless stop plus liquid SC Saint S SP SPL SPR Saint STR SK SKL SKR SB Spur Saint Stir Obstruent plus nasal, GN, KN, SM, SN, SM, SN Obstruent plus, V, GV, KV, SV, Svand more marginally Consonant plus, J, TJ, CJ, FJ, VJ, NJ, THE Affectionate suffixes CJ and NJ, which retain remnants of the Slavic palatalized consonants, may very occasionally be used as words in their own right, as in Mia Sijanha Popolo my dear nation, in which case they may be word initial and not just syllable initial. Although it does not occur initially, the sequence DZ is pronounced as an affricate, as in Edzo e, d, zo, a husband with an open first syllable e, not as asterisk ed, zo. In addition, initial pf occurs in German-derived fenigo penny, k in Sanskrit kasatrio kashatria, and several additional uncommon initial clusters occur in technical words of Greek origin, such as Minnesota, pn, case, ps, sf, feet, kt, pt, bd, such as sphinctero a sphincter which also has the coda nk. Quite a few more clusters turn up in sufficiently obscure words, such as tl in talaspo, thalaspi a genus of herb, and Aztec deities such as Toloco Taloc, the, l, phonemes are presumably devoiced in these words. As this might suggest, greater phonotactic diversity and complexity is tolerated in learned than in quotidian words, almost as if difficult phonotactics were an iconic indication of difficult vocabulary. Deconsonantal codas, for example, generally only occur in technical terms, proper names, and in geographical and ethnic terms, conjunctio a conjunction, arcta arctic, istmo isthmus. However, there is a strong tendency for more basic terms to avoid such clusters, although sent hundred, post after, sancta holy, and the prefix eks X, which can be used as an interjection, eks la rego. Down with the king, are exceptions. Even when coda clusters occur in the source languages, they are often eliminated in Esperanto. For instance, many European languages have words relating to body with a root of corpse. This root gave rise to two words in Esperanto, neither of which keep the full cluster, corpuso a military corpse retaining the original Latin U, and corpo a biological body losing the S. Many ordinary roots end in two or three consonants, such as chickle o a bicycle, sulcher o a shoulder, pingle o a needle, trank i to cut. However, these roots do not normally entail coda clusters except when followed by another consonant in compounds, or with poetic elision of the final o. Even then, only sequences with decreasing sonority are possible, so although poetic trank occurs, asterisk chickle, asterisk sulcher, and asterisk pingle do not, note that the humorous jargon Esperant does not follow this restriction, because it elides the grammatical suffix of all nouns no matter how awkward the result. Within compounds, an epithetic vowel is added to break up what would otherwise be unacceptable clusters of consonants. This vowel is most commonly the nominal affix o, regardless of number or case, as in cant o birdo a songbird the root cant, to sing, is inherently a verb, but other part of speech endings may be used when o is judged to be grammatically inappropriate, as in mult e costa expensive. There is a great deal of personal variation as to when an epithetic vowel is used. <laughs> Allophonic variation With only five oral and no nasal or long vowels, Esperanto allows a fair amount of allophonic variation, though the distinction between e and a, and arguably o and o, is phonemic. The v may be a labiodental fricative v or a labiodental approximant, again in free variation, or w, especially in the sequences kv and gv, but with v considered normative. Alveolar consonants t, d, n, l are acceptably either apical as in English or laminal as in French, generally but incorrectly called dental. Postalveolars c, g, s, j may be palato-alveolar semi-palatalized t, d, as in English and French, or retroflex non-palatalized t, d, as in Polish, Russian, and Mandarin Chinese. H and H may be voiced, especially between vowels. However, aspiration or incomplete voicing of consonants as in English or Mandarin is considered substandard, as are the English diphthongized long 
Vowels I J E J U W L for I E U O. Topic Rotex. The letter R can be realized in many ways, as the letter was defined differently in each language version of the Fundamento de Esperanto. In the French Fundamento, it is defined as R. The French rhotic has a wide range of realizations, both the voiced uvular fricative or approximant, and the voiceless uvular fricative chi, the uvular trill, the alveolar trill r, and the alveolar tap. These are all recognized as the phoneme r, but the trills and the tap are considered dialectal. In the English fundamento, it is defined as in rare, which is an alveolar approximant. In the German fundamento, it is defined as r. Most varieties of Standard German are spoken with a uvular rhotic, now usually a fricative or approximant, rather than the alveolar pronunciation R tilde is used in some Standard German varieties of Germany, Austria, and Switzerland. In the Russian and Polish fundamento, it is defined as R Cyrillic, which is most commonly an alveolar trill R. The most common realization depends on the region and native language of the Esperanto speaker. For example, a very common realization in English-speaking countries is the alveolar flap. Worldwide, the most common realization is probably the alveolar trill R, which makes some people think it is the most desirable pronunciation. However, it is a common misconception to believe that the alveolar trill is the only correct form. The grammar reference Plena Manilibro de Esperanto Grammatico considers the velar form to be totally good if it is trilled, and considers the other realizations acceptable. In practice, the different forms are well understood and accepted by experienced Esperanto speakers. Vowel length and quality Vowel length is not phonemic in Esperanto. Vowels tend to be long in open stressed syllables and short otherwise. Adjacent stressed syllables are not allowed in compound words, and when stress disappears in such situations, it may leave behind a residue of vowel length. Vowel length is sometimes presented as an argument for the phonemic status of the affricates, because vowels tend to be short before most consonant clusters excepting stops plus L or R, as in many European languages, but long before C, G, C, and DZ. Vowel quality has never been an issue for A, I and U, but has been discussed much for E and O. Zamenhof recommended pronouncing the vowels E and O as mid E, O, at all times. Kalakse and Waringian gave more complicated recommendations. For example, they recommended pronouncing stressed E, O as short open mid, in closed syllables and long close mid E, O, in open syllables. However, this is widely considered unduly elaborate, and Zamenhof's recommendation of using mid-vowels is considered the norm. For many speakers, however, the pronunciation of E and O reflects the details of their native language. Apenthesis <inaudible> 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 Epenthetic glottal stops in vowel sequences such as boao boa are non-phonemic, but allowed for the comfort of the speaker. They are especially common with sequences of identical vowels, such as haru hiru hero, and pravo pra avo great -grandfather. Other speakers, however, mark the hiatus by a change of intonation, e.g. by raising the stressed vowel, haru, pravo. It is also very common to pronounce an epenthetic j between an i and a following vowel mia miha mielo mi jello, but this is avoided in careful enunciation. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Poetic elision. Vowel elision is allowed with the grammatical suffix o of singular nominative nouns and the a of the article la, though this rarely occurs outside of poetry. To l core from the heart. Normally semivowels are restricted to offglides in diphthongs. However, poetic meter may force the reduction of unstressed i, and u, to semivowels before a stressed vowel, cormillionoj, komi li, anoi, budwaro, budu, ao. Topic. Assimilation Zamenhof recognized two types of regressive assimilation in Esperanto. Place assimilation among nasals, and voicing assimilation among obstruents. In addition, he noted epenthetic glides between vowels. However, he stated that severely regular 
speech would not have assimilation, and this has led to debate over whether it should occur. An example of the first type is assimilation of n before a velar, as in banco baco bank or sango sao blood. n may also palatalize before palatal j, as in panjo paho mami and sinjoro si joro sir. However, although the desirability of these may be debated, the question almost never arises as to whether the M in emphasi should remain bilabial or should assimilate to labiodental F e phasi, because this assimilation is nearly universal in human language. Indeed, where the orthography allows, we see that assimilation does occur. The debate on voicing assimilation is likewise dependent on speakers' language backgrounds. Assimilation may or may not occur in words that maintain Latinate orthography such as absolute absolutely or obtusa obtuse, depending on the speaker's background, despite the fact that potentially contrastive voiceless equivalents such as apsido apsis and optico optics occur absolute, absolute or even absolute for absolute, obtusa, obtusa or even obtusa for obtusa. Instead, the debate centers around the non-Latinate orthographic sequence kz, frequently found in Latinate words like exemple for example, and existi to exist. It is often claimed that kz is properly pronounced as written, with mixed voicing, kz, despite the fact that Zamenhof recognized that the k may assimilate to the z for exemple, existi, as in Slavic, English, French, and many other languages. The two opinions are called exismo and exismo in Esperanto. In practice, most Esperanto speakers assimilate both kz to z and nk to k when speaking fluently. Compound words such as oak deck 80, long tomp for a long time, and glavesonoro the ringing of a sword are likewise more likely to retain mixed voicing, though assimilation is not uncommon in rapid speech, and may even be preferred, odic, lock tempi, lefso noro. However, in compounds of lexical words Zamenhof inserted an epenthetic vowel between obstruents with different voicing, as in rosakalora pink, never asterisk roskalora, and long attempt, never asterisk longtomp as with some later writers, mixed voicing only occurred with grammatical forms. V behaves as a sonorant when it occurs after another consonant, and even Slavs readily distinguish Zamenhofian KV from GV. V is also never found in coda position in Zamenhof's writing, because that would force it to contrast with U. Similarly, mixed sibilant sequences, as in the polymorphemic disjeti to scatter, tend to assimilate, sometimes completely, in rapid speech though, if noticed, this would be considered incorrect. Like the generally ignored regressive devoicing in words such as absurda, progressive devoicing tends to go unnoticed within stop sonorant clusters, as in plua place, ua additional, contrasts with blua, blua blue, and nabo kn, abo boy. the kn contrasts with gn, as in nomo, nomo nom. partial to full devoicing of the sonorant is probably the norm for most speakers. Voicing assimilation of affricates and fricatives before nasals, as in tacmento, a detachment. And the suffix ismo ism, is both more noticeable and easier for most speakers to avoid, so ismo for ismo is less tolerated than absolute for absolute. Zamenhof also noted that glides may be inserted between dissimilar vowels, especially after high vowels as in miha for mia and plua for plua. This is quite common, and there is no possibility of confusion, because ij and u do not occur in Esperanto, but may cause confusion between heia and geja, as mentioned above. Topic. Loss of phonemic H The sound of X was always somewhat marginal in Esperanto, and there has been a strong move to merge it into K, starting with suggestions from Zamenhof himself. Dictionaries generally cross-reference and K, but the sequence R as in architecturo architecture was replaced by RK architecturo so completely by the early 20th century that few dictionaries even list R as an option. Other words, such as hemio chemistry and monaho monk, still vary but are more commonly found with k chemio, monaco. In a few cases, such as with words of Russian origin, may instead be replaced by h. This merger has had only a few complications. Zamenhof gave horo chorus the alternative form caruso, because both koro heart and horo hour were taken. The two words still almost universally seen with are aho echo and siho a check. Ek perfective aspect and siko check already exist, though eku for eho is occasionally seen. Topic: 
Proper names and borrowings A common source of allophonic variation is borrowed words, especially proper names, when non-esperantized remnants of the source language orthography remain, or when novel sequences are created in order to avoid duplicating existing roots. For example, it is doubtful that many people fully pronounce the G in Vasingtono as either or K, or pronounce the H in Budo Buddha. Such situations are unstable, and in many cases dictionaries recognize that certain spellings and therefore pronunciations are inadvisable. For example, the physical unit, Watt, was first borrowed as uato, to distinguish it from vato, cotton wool, and this is the only form found in dictionaries in 1930. However, initial violates Esperanto phonotactics, and by 1970 there was an alternative spelling, vato. This was also unsatisfactory, however, because of the geminate T, and by 2000 the effort had been given up, with Vado now the advised spelling for both Watt and Cotton Wool. Some recent dictionaries no longer even list initial in their index. Likewise, several dictionaries now list a newer spelling Vasantono for Washington. <laughs> 